to session 6 of the chapter ray optics this session will be on lenses first of all let us understand what actually a lens is what is a lens a lens is an optical medium it is an optical medium what is the meaning of optical medium it is a medium through which light passes right okay a lens is an optical medium bounded by two surfaces it is an optical medium closed by two surfaces bounded by two surfaces such that of which at least one is spherical of which at least one is spherical so that kind of optical medium is called as a lens a lens is an optical medium bounded by two surfaces of which at least one is spherical means at least one of the bounding surface must be spherical right both may be spherical but if if at least one of the spherical a uh, bounding surface is spherical then that kind of optical medium is called as a lens right so it is an optical medium bounded by two surfaces of which at least one is spherical okay let us see some of the lenses lens may be like this i will be taking two surfaces and those are spherical in nature right this is a lens which is thick at the middle compared to that of edges so this kind of lens is called as by convex lens it is called as biconvex lens because both the surfaces are convex in nature that is why this kind of lens is called as biconvex lens lens may be like this also right so both are spherical and uh, they are concave in nature that is why we call it as biconcave lens right okay lens may be like this also one is plane and another one is spherical right one is plane and another one is spherical and this is convex it is bulged outside so it is convex so this kind of lens is called as plano convex lens one is plane that is why plano convex lens this kind of lens is called as plano convex lens lens may be like this also one is plane and another one is a concave in structure so this kind of lens is called as plano concave uh, lens right so these are some of the lenses right we need to study two lenses one is biconvex and another one is biconcave biconvex lens is also called as simply a convex lens right if convex lens is given it is understood that it is biconvex right biconcave lens is also called as concave lens simply a concave lens if we tell it is a concave lens understood that both the surfaces surfaces are concave in nature right so biconcave lens is also called as concave lens biconvex lens is also called as convex lens right we will be studying about these two in detail okay let us start with the first one that is convex lens okay the first one is convex lens let us take convex lens and this convex lens is also called converging lens converging lens convex lens is also called as converging lens why it is called converging lens let us check it out this is a convex lens let me take like this it is a lens which is like this this kind of lens is called as convex lens a convex lens a convex lens is thicker at the middle thicker at the middle than at the edges than at the edges if you compare this lens is thicker at the middle than at the edges so this kind of lens is called as convex lens right so thicker at the middle compared to that of edges right thinner at the edges thicker in at the middle so this kind of lens is called as convex lens right why it is called as converging let us check it out if parallel rays of light fall on this convex lens if i am taking a parallel rays like this so this is a parallel rays which fall on the 
convex lens and after refracting it converges since it falls exactly at the middle it passes in the same line it, do, it will not deviate other converge at a point if i'm taking like this it also converges at a point this ray this ray also converges at a point this ray that also converges at a point since parallel rays of light converge at a point on refracting through it so this kind of lens is called as converging lens right if parallel rays of light follow the convex lens it converges at a point where do you get a parallel rays parallel rays we get if the source is at infinity at far away distance the rays what we get are parallel if parallel rays of light fall on the convex lens they converge at a point right since this lens converges the parallel rays of light that kind of lens is called as converging lens and the point at which these rays converge that point is called as principal focus let me call it as f that is principal focus right so there is a, a point here let me call it as o here that is optic center right optic center plays the same role as that of pole in case of mirror right in mirror we have seen pole in lenses we are speaking about optic center right so this point is called as principal focus and this line is called as principal axis right okay let us check it out a convex lens is thicker at the middle than at the edges it converges converges parallel rays of light rays of light right it converges parallel rays of light on refracting through it on refracting through it right see it converges parallel rays of light on passing through it or on refracting through it since it converges at a point that is why this kind of lens is called as converging lens right convex lens is also called as converging lens because it converges parallel rays of light at a point right as it converges parallel rays of light on refracting through it so this kind of lens is called as converging lens and this point is called as principal focus and this is called as optic center right we also know that the distance between optic center and the principal focus we can call it as focal length let me call it as like this so this distance right let me call this distance as a focal length right what is focal length in case of lens focal length is the distance between principal focus and optic center right in case of lens when we speak in the case of mirror it is distance between principal focus and pole right in case of lens focal length is the distance between principal focus and optic center right so this distance is called as focal length right so always convex lens converges the parallel rays of light that is why that lens is called as converging lens now here right okay now let us move to the next one that is concave lens okay next one is about concave lens okay when we speak about this concave lens it is also called as diverging lens it is also called as diverging lens okay let us check it out how it actually it is like right okay now if i am considering a concave lens it is like this right so if i am taking this is a lens and this lens is called as concave lens okay what is concave lens a concave lens a concave lens is thinner at the middle than at the edges let me write a similar sentence what i have written here a concave lens is thinner at the middle than at the edges right it is thicker at the middle than at the edges that is called as convex thinner at the middle than at the edges that kind of lens is called as concave lens why it is called as diverging because it diverges right okay if i take parallel rays of light incidenting on this concave right let me take like this these are the parallel rays of light incidenting now here right okay if i'm considering parallel rays of light which incidence on the concave right so these are parallel rays of light okay this come from a object which is at a far distance or the object is at infinity that time we get a parallel rays of light as parallel rays of light 
if I am considering like this, if I take a ray which passes through the optical center, it will not deviate at all, right? It will move forward like this. Okay, let me take like this. Uh, this ray moves forwards, right? Okay, what does a concave lens do? It diverges the parallel rays of light. Means, if the parallel rays of light falls on the concave lens, it diverges, right? It diverges in a such a way that it appears to come from a point. So it diverges like this. So it diverges like this. Right? If a ray of light falls on the concave mirror, it diverges. And it appears to come from a point and this point is called as principal focus in case of concave lens. Right? This point is called as principal focus. Right? Okay. Shall I write the same thing here? It diverges it diverges parallel rays of light. It diverges parallel rays of light on refracting through it. On refracting through it. Now you're right. On refracting through it. A convex lens is thinner at the middle than at the edges. It diverges parallel rays of light on refracting through it. Since it diverges, that kind of lens is called as diverging lens, right? Okay, so this, this is called as principal focus. As you know, this point is called as optic center, right? And the distance between the principal axis and optic center, this distance is called as focal length. As we have already studied here, this is called as focal length. And here, the distance between principal focus and optic center, this distance is called as focal length. Right, so this is all about what actually a convex lens is and what actually a concave lens is. Now, let us understand what actually the optic center of the lens is. Right, if I am considering a lens, let us consider a lens, this lens, let me consider a convex lens. And uh, this is the principal axis. So, what is the optic center? Optic center, let me take like this, optic center is a point on the principal axis. It is a point on the principal axis. Optic center is actually a point on the principal axis inside the lens. Inside the lens. Okay. It is a point on the principal axis inside the lens through which through which rays of lights pass undeviated if I'm taking it here through which the rays of light pass undeviated if rays of light pass undeviated through that point so that point is called as a optic center if I'm considering like this a ray of light falls at the optic center it, it passes undeviated if a ray of light pass through the optic center, it passes undeviated. If the ray of light pass at the optic center, it passes undeviated. So that kind of point on the principal axis inside the lens, so that kind of point is called as optic center. It is not mandatory that it should be exactly at the center of the lens, right? It is a point where the rays of light pass undeviated, that kind of point is called as optic center. So optic center plays the similar role that of pole in case of mirror, right? So whenever we speak about lens, we speak about uh, optic center and it is a point of the principal axis inside the lens through which rays of light pass undeviated, right? Okay, next. We will be going with the, what are the sign conventions, right? We have studied about sign conventions for mirror. Now let us understand what are the sign conventions used in lens. Okay, let me take like this. What are the sign conventions used in lens right we have studied about the sign conventions which is used in mirror now we will be studying what are the sign conventions used in lens right first one is that distances are always measured distances are always measured from optic center 
so here we will be measuring the distances from optic center right if i uh, remind you in case of mirror distances are always measured from the pore of the mirror in a similar manner in lenses distances are always measured from optic center from optic center we will be measuring the distances so what are the distances the distances may be object distance image distance focal length the radius of curvature everything right all the distances are measured from optic center right okay the second one is the distance measured in the direction let me take like this distances measure in the direction of incident ray right distances measured in the direction of incident ray are taken are taken to be what we say now here positive whereas distances measured in the direction in the direction opposite to incident ray in the direction opposite to incident ray are taken to be what we say here negative right this is the same convection that we use for mirror right distances measured in the direction ray in the direction of incident ray are taken to be positive and whereas distances measured in the direction opposite to incident ray are taken to be negative right for example if i am considering a, a convex lens now here let me consider a convex lens and uh, we know that the rays of light converge at a point let me call it as f this is optic center right if i am taking a parallel ray it converges at this point let me take like this this where is focal length so let me call this is as focal length come on tell me now is focal length positive or negative in case of convex lens in case of convex lens focal length is positive or negative let us check it out focal length is is measured from optic center okay i am measuring from here and it is in this direction is it in the direction of incident ray or opposite to the direction of incident ray it is in the direction of incident ray itself that is why for convex lens focal length is always considered to be positive do remember this always for a convex lens focal length is taken positive right okay for example if i am considering in case of concave let us consider concave we know that parallel rays if they fall on the concave right it passes undeviated and it appears to come from a point right it also pass passes like this it also deviates like this but they appear to come from some point this point is optic center so what is this now here it is the focal length so which kind of lens it is it is concave lens come on tell me for concave lens is focal length positive or negative okay the distances are always measured from optic center right i am measuring from here and i am measuring in this direction is it in the direction or in the opposite direction of incident ray it is in the opposite direction of incident ray that is why focal length is taken to be negative for which lens now here con con cave lens right so in the similar manner we can calculate uh, object distance image distance right all thing all the distances can be measured by using this convection do you remember distances are always measured from optic center if the distance measured in the direction of incident ray take it as positive or as take it as negative okay let me write this point about uh, focal length focal length let me write like this focal length of uh, convex lens of convex lens is taken to be what we say now here positive understood it is positive remember for convex lens focal length is always positive right we need to take it as always positive focal length of convex lens is taken to be positive and focal length of concave lens concave lens is taken to be what we say now here negative simple right focal length is taken to be positive in case of convex lens negative in case of concave lens why do we take like this we use sign conventions that we use for lenses now here right and the other sign convention is similar if the object 
is in this direction then we take it as positive if it is inverted we take it as negative right the distance is a uh, upward to the principal axis is taken to be positive and the distance or the height taken downwards it is taken to be negative right these all are the sign conventions that we will be using in case of lens right so these are some of the sign conventions that we use while measuring distances in lenses now here right okay now let us actually find how actually the image is formed in lens now here right okay let us take like this image formed by lens right after understanding sign conventions let us understand how actually the image is formed right okay let me take like this formation of image formation of image by what we say now here lens let us understand how actually the image is formed by lens now here let us take both the lens and let us check it out how actually the image is formed now first let me start with the uh, convex lens now here right okay let us consider like this this is the principal axis and uh, let me take a convex lens like this so this is the convex lens right okay if i am considering a convex lens like this and this point what is this point called this point called is as optic center what is optic center if a ray passes through optic center it passes undeviated right okay now let us take an object here this is an object right do remember this is an object kept in front of convex lens let us check it out where actually the image is formed right again there are rules to find how actually the image is formed by the lens we all know that if a ray is parallel to the principal axis if i'm taking it like this i will be taking first ray which is parallel to the principal axis okay where actually the uh, ray goes right after refraction ray passes through the principal focus if it is a convex lens we know where is principal focus here right it passes through the principal focus let me take like this it passes through the principal focus right how actually is image formed by the lens okay first of all take a ray which is parallel to the principal axis if i take a ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction it passes through the principal focus this is the first okay second we will be taking a ray which passes through the optic center okay let me check it out if it passes through the optic center okay what actually happens if a ray of light passes through optic center it is not deviated at all right it is not deviated and it meets at this point and this is the image right where actually they meet there is the image formed by this object right this is object and this is image here the image is formed inverted right okay so do you remember here so by taking two rays we can find where actually the image is formed by this object in case of which lens now here in case of convex lens this is called as optic center and this is the image formed and this distance is called as object distance and this distance is called as image distance for example this distance let me call it as u object distance and uh, let me call this distance as what we say now here image distance this is how the image is formed by convex lens now let us check it out how actually the image is formed by concave lens okay let us take this is a principal axis and uh, let me take like this and uh, this is a lens right this is a concave let me take right this is a concave concave lens let me take the similar thing here right let me take an object at this position right now let us find where actually the image is formed by this object okay first what we need to do take a ray which is parallel to the principal axis okay now let me consider a ray which is parallel to the principal axis what happens right since it is concave lens it diverges the ray which is incidenting on it right so it diverges in a such a way that it appears to come from a point so what is this point this point is principal focus let me take here what is this now here it is optic center right okay first ray parallel it diverges it appears to come from this point right okay now the second ray passes through the optic center 
right what happens if a ray passes through the optic center if it passes through the optic center what happens if a ray passes through the optic center it is not deviated right it moves like this right so where do these two rays meet they meet at a point they cannot meet forward now here right as we extend it meets at this point and this is nothing but what is that now here image right this is object and this is image right so this is how image is formed in case of convex lens so what is object distance here this is object distance right so this is object distance distance of the object from the optic center what is the image distance let me call this is the image distance right the distance of the image from optic center and this is how the image is formed in case of lenses in case of convex as well as in case of concave now let us move on to the lens makers formula what is lens makers formula let us check it out 1 divided by f is equal to nl divided by nm minus 1 1 divided by r1 minus 1 divided by r2 this formula is called as lens makers formula right the manufacturers the manufacturers of the lenses use this formula use this formula to design a lens hence this formula is called lens makers formula this formula is called as lens makers formula right by using this lens makers formula we can manufacture or we can design the lens hence the name lens makers formula so what are this let us check it out right f is the focal length okay for example if i want to manufacture a convex lens now here let me take like this this is a convex lens let me consider this is a convex lens right this is the principal axis let me take now here what is this this is nl what is nl refractive index of the lens okay here it is nl refractive index of the lens and what is outside refractive index of the medium and this is refractive index of the medium if air okay you can take air if water you can take refractive index of water right both the side the medium is same now here right lens is kept in a medium of refractive index nm and what is nl that is refractive index of the lens right what is f f is the focal length of the lens we know focal length of convex lens is positive for concave lens is negative right f is the focal length right so we need to design the focal length of a, a, a focal length of a particular value right if you want to manufacture a lens of a particular focal length we can use this formula right we understood nl nm what are this r1 and r2 r1 and r2 are the radius of curvature of the two spherical surfaces okay this lens is made up of two spherical surfaces this lens is bounded by two spherical surfaces let me call this is the first spherical surface and this is the second spherical surface right for example let me take a b c and d what is a b c abc is first spherical surface what is adc adc is second spherical surface what is r1 radius of curvature of first spherical surface okay what is first spherical surface abc okay let us continue this i'll be getting a sphere now here if i get the sphere this is the center of curvature if i'm taking like this right so what is this this is this is nothing but radius of curvature right radius of the sphere of which this is a part so what is r1 r1 is the radius of curvature of first spherical surface a b c then what is r2 r2 is radius of curvature of second spherical surface what is second spherical surface this is second spherical surface if i continue this i'll be getting a sphere if i get a sphere this is the center and this distance is called as r2 what is r2 r2 is the radius of curvature of second spherical surface a d c right so we understood what actually the lens makers formula is 1 by f is equal to nl divided by nm minus 1 1 divided by r1 minus 1 divided by r2 what is nl refractive index of lens what is nm refractive index of the medium in which lens is kept r1 radius of curvature of first spherical surface 
and r2 is the radius of curvature of the second spherical surface now we will be deriving this lens makers formula okay next that is derivation derivation of lens makers formula so we came to know what actually the lens maker formula is next we will be moving with the what is the derivation of lens makers formula how did you get that lens makers what we say in here formula derivation of lens makers formula to derive this we need to know the formula for refraction at spherical surface this is the thing which already we have studied refraction at spherical surface refraction at spherical surface and we know what is the formula for refractive refraction at spherical surface n2 divided by v minus n1 divided by u that is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r so this is the formula that you need to know for this derivation right refraction at spherical surface this is the derivation which i have de already done in the previous session right n2 divided by v minus n1 divided by u is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r right refractive index of the second medium divided by image distance refractive index first medium divided by object distance difference in the refractive index divided by radius of curvature so if you know this formula then we will be uh, deriving the lens makers formula now let us move on to discuss about lens makers formula right okay now for uh, deriving this let me consider a convex lens right so this is the principal axis and uh, let me consider a convex lens okay do understand there are two spherical surfaces let me consider a b c this is the first spherical surface and this is the another spherical surface let me call it as a d c is another spherical surface okay let me take a uh, even line here let me take like this okay this is the sp second spherical surface let me call it as n t okay what is its refractive index this refractive index is n l what is the refractive index n m what is the refractive index now here n m right okay now this is a convex lens so do remember this uh, equation here right now let us consider there is an object here let us consider an object and a ray of light falls at this okay let me take it as nl a ray of light falls on the convex lens what actually happens let me tell you now let us check it out what actually happens here if i am taking a convex lens like this right so it is made up of two spherical surfaces and this is a principal axis let me take a b c is the first spherical surface and a d c is the second spherical surface and uh, this is object o right if a ray of light incident on the first spherical surface a b c next actually where actually the ray of light moves let us check it out now here right to know this first we need to draw a normal at this point if it is a plane surface a line which is drawn perpendicular to it that itself is a normal but abc is not a plane surface it is a spherical surface then how to draw a normal to a spherical surface the line which passes the center of curvature gives the normal at that point okay now let us find what is the center of curvature of this sphere right if i am considering this is a sphere this will be the center of curvature and a line which uh, passes through center of curvature becomes what we say now here normal so this is a line which passes the center of curvature and this line is called as normal now how actually the ray of light is moving now here it moves from rarer medium to denser medium because it is glass and this is air right if a ray of light moves from rarer medium to denser medium it bends towards the normal right so it bends towards normal and let me take like this chill here right it reaches at this point now what happens at this point again i need to draw a normal to understand how actually the ray of light moves from here right how to draw the normal at that point again draw a line which passes through center of curvature of that spherical surface okay now this is a spherical surface and uh, let me uh, draw like this and this is uh, the center of curvature right now this line becomes normal at this point 
this line becomes normal now ray of light is moving from glass to air it is moving from denser medium to rarer medium it bends away from the normal right so this is the normal and uh, it bends away from the normal and uh, where do you get the image this is the image right this is the object and this is the image right o is the object and i is the image and uh, this is if i'm considering a lens to be thin right so in this chapter we will be learning thin lenses right whatever lens we consider all those are thin lenses right what are thin lenses we will be uh, knowing now here right a thin lens is a lens whose thickness is small this is a thickness right the thickness is small as compared to the radius of curvature that lens is called as thin lens right so uh, this becomes what we say now object distance and uh, this becomes what we say now image distance right okay now if at all do remember if at all second surface was not there just think it over what would have happened if second surface was not there if second surface was not there it would have been forming image at this point and let me call it as i dash what is i dash i dash is image formed by first surface only what is i i is the image formed by the lens let me take like this i dash is the image formed by first surface if at all second surface is not there if you take the second surface image will be at this point now right so this is actually the ray diagram let me make it simple and draw here right okay this is object let me take like this okay this is the image formed let me consider what is this now here image of the lens right let me take another one let me take like this and what is this now here i dash what is i dash i dash is the image formed by the first spherical surface okay what is this distance let me call it as u and what is this distance let me call it as v this is object distance and this is image distance right this is the image formed by the first spherical surface and let me consider it as what we say now here x right okay now let us understand here how to derive lens makers formula right okay for example if i want to derive this let me write about this now here right consider consider a convex lens consider a convex lens of a focal length what is the convex lens of focal length f right it is a convex lens whose focal length is f convex positive right focal length is positive consider a convex lens of focal length f and uh, refractive index and uh, refractive index what is the refractive index nl placed in a refractive index placed in a let me take no here medium of refractive index placed in a medium of refractive index what we say here nm right so it is placed in a medium of refractive index nm now what all we want r1 and r2 let r1 and r2 be what are this now here radius of curvature radius of curvature of spherical surfaces of spherical surfaces which are the spherical surfaces a b c and what we say now here a d c respectively just we have introduced about this ray diagram consider convex lens of focal length f and refractive index nl placed in a medium of refractive index nm let r1 and r2 be the radius of curvature of two refracting surfaces one is spherical surfaces one is abc and another one is adc and these r1 and r2 are the radius of curvature of two spherical surfaces abc and adc respectively now let us continue with this now here right okay now let us find what happens when we consider this equation let me write using relation we know refraction at spherical surface i already told you if you know the formula for refraction at spherical surface because it is a spherical surface and refraction takes place and you need to know the formula for refraction at spherical surface what is the formula for refraction at spherical surface that is n2 divided by v minus n1 divided by u that is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r do understand this 
right gen 2 divided by v minus n1 divided by u is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r or let me take like this n2 divided by image distance let me take like this n2 divided by image distance divided by n1 divided by object distance let me take like object distance that is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r what is r radius of curvature so we need to use this relation and derive the equation called lens makers formula okay let us continue with this now here right now let me use this formula for refraction at both the surfaces abc and adc okay let us start with the first one that is refraction at spherical surface abc let me take here right so this is nm let me write here nm let me write here so i need space here right so first one that is a refraction refraction at surface what is the surface first surface that is what we seen here a b c let us use this formula for a refraction at surface a b c okay if i am considering only one surface a b c do you understand there is no second surface called a d c if it is only a b c okay what happens let me check in absence in absence of surface what is that surface a d c in absence of surface a d c where actually image is formed image is formed at i dash okay image is formed at what we say here i dash image let me take like this image i dash is formed at distance what is that distance now here x at distance x image i dash is formed if at all there is no second surface adc right that is what i am discussing first one refraction at surface abc right i am discussing about the first one refraction at surface abc so in absence of surface adc image i dash is formed at a distance x now shall i use uh, this formula using this relation come on tell me this is first surface nm this is second surface nl so formula starts with refractive index of the second surface okay if it is not there what is the second surface nl shall i write like this n l divided by what is image distance man okay if second surface is not there image is formed at i dash what is image distance then x shall i say like this image distance as x minus refractive index of the first medium what is the refractive index of first medium nm shall i write like this nm divided by object distance what is object distance object distance is u that is equal to n2 minus n1 that is nl minus nm divided by radius of curvature of the first surface you know if it is first surface what is its radius of curvature radius of curvature let me call it as r1 as already i have took that r1 is the radius of curvature of first surface and r2 is the radius of curvature of the second surface and let me take it as equation number 1 right so this is refraction at what we say here surface abc let me consider the same thing refraction at surface adc okay now let me write like this refraction at uh, what we say here surface what is the second surface adc okay do understand i'll be discussing refraction at surface adc okay if adc is present then what happens now here right okay one thing what you need to remember here is image i dash acts as virtual object do you understand this thing right if at all we have the second surface what happens okay before uh, we understand about this virtual object we need to know about the diagram now here right okay let me write the diagram here as i have already told you if this is a lens now here right so this is object it falls here it reflects and it if at all second surface is not there so it would have been gone like this right okay for second surface come on tell me now here for second surface what is the incident ray incident ray is like this but where is that object there is no object back side but if you go here there is one object called i dash so let me call that i dash let me tell you that it acts as what we say here virtual object do remember whenever two surfaces are there the image of the first surface acts as a virtual object for the second surface just to understand here right okay i am speaking about the second surface 
I remove, shall I remove this first surface? If I remove the surface, surface, what is the incident ray? This is the incident ray. Then where should be the object? Okay, there is no object here. But if I extend this, there is an object here. So let me call I dash as the virtual object. Right? Do you remember? For second surface, what is I dash? I dash is the virtual object. Right? Okay. Do you understand this? Right? Image I dash accepts virtual object forming forming image what is the image formed i at distance what is the distance now here at distance v right okay once again make it clear here what is o object what is i image of the lens what is i dash image of the first spherical surface and now we came to know that it plays another one role what is that it is the virtual object for second surface right so i dash has both the roles one image of the first surface another one is virtual object of the second surface right okay now we have the formula where is that formula okay just i removed it let me write here n2 by image distance n2 by image distance minus n1 by object distance that is equal to what is the formula n2 minus n1 divided by r okay now let me use that formula where is n2 okay i am speaking about the second refracting surface this is n1 and this is n2 what is n2 nm nm divided by image distance where is the image form this is the image what is i dash virtual object image and what is the image distance v shall i take like this v right minus n1 what is n1 here nl right nl because i am speaking about the second refracting surface this is if n1 and this is the n2 now right so nl divided by object distance come on tell me for second spherical surface where is the object this is the object right as i already told you i dash plays acts as the virtual object if this is object then what is this distance is it a object distance yes it is an object distance so let me take it as x okay shall i take here x that is equal to right n2 minus n1 shall i say like this nm minus nl divided by r what is r radius of curvature of the spherical surface and for second spherical surface what is the radius of curvature radius of curvature is n2 and let me take it as equation number 2 right so we got two equations here equation 1 and equation 2 now simple now let us calculate let us solve these two equations and we will be arriving at lens makers formula right okay now let me do the calculations right so what shall i do adding 1 and 2 right let me take like this adding equations 1 and 2 now right okay let us add let us add these two equations what is that nl divided by x minus nm divided by u i am adding this side what is that nm divided by v minus nl divided by x this is first and this side okay now let us add all both the left right hand sides now right nl minus nm divided by r1 plus the next one nm minus nl divided by what do you get now here r2 right just i added both the equations equation 1 and equation 2 okay what do i get shall i cancel this yes it cancels it out what do you get now here nm minus v shall i write like this minus nm minus u shall i take like this right here shall i write nl minus nm divided by what shall i write now here r1 here it is nl minus nm here it is nm minus nl shall i take it as minus minus means i shall, I shall reverse it nl minus nm divided by r2 do you understand here nl minus n m minus nl just i reverse it so that i will be taking minus here so that i need to remove the common term here right okay what is common here n m what is remaining inside 1 minus v sorry 1 divided by v minus 1 divided by u what is common here n l minus n m is common what is remaining inside 1 divided by r1 minus 1 divided by r2 right okay now let me continue let me continue with the derivation of him
Okay, what do I get? If I am taking this uh, Nm to this side, what do I get? 1 divided by V minus 1 divided by U. What do I get now here? Nl minus Nm divided by, what shall I take now here? Nm. Okay, this Nm comes this side. What do I get here? 1 divided by R1 minus 1 divided by, what do I say now here? R2. Now, if I take, right, for example, if object is at infinity, where is the image? Image is at, what we say now here? Focus. Yes or no? Let us check it out now here. If object is at infinity, right, I already told you, if this is a lens, if object is at infinity, means parallel rays, where they meet at a point, so this is called as what we say now here? focal length. If object is at infinity, where is the image formed? Image is formed at the focus. That's why I written as, if object is at infinity, means it is very far away, right? Means parallel rays. Where is the image? Image is at a focus because all the parallel rays meet at a point and that is itself is a focus now, right? Okay. Come on, tell me, if object is at infinity, infinity, object is at infinity, then what is the object distance? object distance is infinity then what will be the image distance image is formed at focus what will be the image distance it is nothing but f right do remember this right if object is at infinity image is at focus right object is at infinity image is at focus so let me substitute this in that equation what do i get 1 divided by in place of v shall i write f now here right minus 1 divided by in place of u shall i write infinity right okay now what do i get here that is nl minus nm divided by nm what do i get 1 divided by r1 minus 1 divided by r2 right so 1 by infinity it's 0 what do i get 1 by f that is equal to shall i bifurcate this nl divided by nm minus nm by nm let me take it as 1 right what do i get here 1 divided by R1 minus 1 divided by R2. So, this equation 1 divided by F is equal to NL divided by NM minus 1 1 into the bracket 1 divided by R1 minus 1 divided by R2. This equation is called lens makers what we say now here formula. This is called as lens makers formula and this is the derivation. Do you remember? derive lens makers formula the question will be asked like this and you need to draw that and uh, we need to know what happens to refraction at both the surfaces and we will be arriving at the equation this and this equation is called as lens makers formula thank you